Game begin. Hola, mi amigos. I want to update you guys on this, as well as some other aquaponics stuff that I did in the back, which we'll get around to in a second. But um, I also want to get rid of a bunch of stuff. Um, so this week, it's going to be this thing, which we'll talk about more about how it works here at the end of the video. But um, if you want it, all you have to do is be the first person to say, I want it in the comments. Um, little trick though, Patreon people are probably going to see this before the rest of y'all. Um, let's take a look at what I did here. So haven't changed a lot myself since the last time you guys saw it, but you can see that it just kind of exploded. Shit. Everything's doing very, very well. The beans are just doing incredibly. This and this are some basil that got transplanted from the other garden beds. Uh, there are still some carrots in here that are still chugging along. I don't know how well carrots will do in aquaponics. The leave part of them seems pretty, uh, pretty sparse, pretty weak sauce, but we'll see how they do. I know that they take a long time to grow. The jalapeno is just turning into a tree. You can see flowers all over it, so we should have plenty of jalapenos for the salsa and whatnot, and you can see the, the beans growing up. And I, I had hoped that when I did this in the first place, I had hoped that I could get these beans to kind of do this hanging bit here, and they cooperated perfectly. It, it took a while, because like they would try to, they, they want to climb up, they do their, I don't know if you've ever watched that in slow motion, but as these tendrils grow, they do this bit. And anytime they touch something, they start wrapping around it. So I'd have to untangle them and encourage them to grow out that way. And then your gravity eventually took over. But I got to this point where they're actually really, really providing a fair amount of shade for this main tank here. And that was the goal is to try to keep some of the direct sun from heating the water. I think it's done so pretty well so far. Got some sweet peas back here too, but man, I don't I don't know if they like this heat so much. In the ghetto. In the ghetto. On the cold and gray Chicago moon, another little baby child is born in the ghetto. In the ghetto. There are also some sweet peas back here. We'll see if we can get you a closer look at it. But they um they don't seem like they've really like the heat so much. They started their life all covered up by these green beans, and I think that might have stunted them early on. I don't know. They are producing peas, but they just seem, they don't seem to have exploded the way these green beans did. The fish are getting a lot bigger. Way, the tilapia are way larger than the goldfish now, and um, let me see if I can get you a better look at them. Let's feed them. All right, I already fed them this morning, so they probably won't be super piggies about this, but we can always get them up to the surface a little bit. That's a food, if you care. So if you haven't seen this before, there's a pump down there that brings water up here, which floods the top part slowly over the course of about five minutes or so. Once it gets full, it reaches the top of the bell siphon and the top part drains in about 30 seconds through this pipe here, which kind of stirs things around, reoxygenates the water, helps the fish stay alive, and then it sucks the poopy parts up into the gravel bed, which helps the vegetables stay alive. And you can see it is just beginning 
to siphon. It starts dribbling out at first, but once, once it starts sucking from the bottom, it shoots out real good and just sprays all over the wall until completion. And when it's, when it's spent entirely, it stops. But yeah, you can see it really just forcefully ejecting all over the wall there. Just a, a great volume of uh, a fluid is, is being sprayed with significant force against the wall. And the fish love it. Just all over the little fishy faces and all that. Keeps them nice and cool. And there you go, like an old man trying to stop peeing. Oh, oh, a little bit, oh, 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 ah. And you can hear that little burpy fart sound at the end, which signifies the uh, air got sucked in up here at the top. This is where the bell siphon is. That's just a little cap to keep the stuff from falling down in there, but the bell siphon's what does all that ma magic. Beans here, or the, sorry, sweet peas here. You can see barely. There's one nice little pod here. There are a couple of other ones, the smaller ones, one down here. So it's doing okay, but it's just not the explosion of green like these uh, these beans have been. So let me take you around back and show you what I did with the bigger version. Now that I think I got my mind straight. Okay, so here's the big one. This time around, I decided to plant first, add fish later. I think I might have less of a little fishy if I get the chemistry of the, the water right. And yeah, I know I can buy test kits and whatnot to figure out exactly what the water's doing, but I just kind of enjoy tinkering with it, honestly. I got the water flowing. I added these things here just to keep rock from being up against and betwixt and inside of the the pipe um, getting it to flow evenly between the two was a little trickier than i expected it would be it's a pretty substantial flow coming out of that thing might be hard for you guys to see down there but despite that substantial flow it doesn't want to split evenly between them. I figured it'd be as simple as just uh, crank that thing on and what? I figured it'd be as simple as just crank that thing on and stick a level on top of this T-valve and it ought to give more or less the same amount of water to either side, but it did not work out that way. It, for quite a while, it, um, it definitely favored one side or the other and I think what was happening was that it was actually siphoning. Once one side started to get good and good and high, it would start to suck from there as soon as the bell siphon would start, but then the other side would backfill through this pipe. I think it would just try to keep it level <laughs> with the one that was draining. So I added, again, probably hard to tell, but I added a tiny little vent hole right there on each side and that combined with leveling out the that that T connector that seems to have put a damper on the the whole siphoning situation and and now it seems like they they both fill and drain at more or less the same rate i haven't actually timed them yet but it's close enough for now anyway let me see if i can get a good video of this without dropping the camera inside Of course, it takes quite a bit longer to drain this one than it does to drain that one out in the front yard because obviously substantially more water in these in these beds. I'm not sure how much how much this can support. I think I could probably add four or five more grow beds like this and it would still be able to support this 275 gallon tank. I think 
I'm no geographist, but I suspect that if I put a large number of fish in this tank, that it could quickly overwhelm the capacity of these beds to, to filter. So I'll add a few fish to it, but once um, I'm not, I'm not going to go, I'm not going to go all out until, until I've got a fair amount of biomass here to filter out what those little poopy bastards put in the water. Okay, so there's the update. Obviously, this is still a work in progress. Uh, these are compost bins here. I'll probably move them elsewhere. I'm weighing a couple of different things because I want to provide shade that doesn't look like absolute ass, and I want to um, keep the direct sun off of the container, especially. I don't want algae growth, and I don't want to cook the fish. So I've got some ideas on that. I was thinking maybe uh, a block wall around it. I won't bother with the mortar, just kind of uh, fill dirt. Um, maybe about halfway up or so because that would also give me a step to work from and I was thinking about doing maybe a kind of pergola style with uh, cross beams to give shade and not look like absolute ass but yeah like I said it's all up in the air and I'm kind of cheap <laughs> so I'm not sure exactly how I'll approach it but we're moving along we're getting there on to this bit so I did a video on this a uh, long time ago on my own channel, but that video sucked and I didn't give it away. So um, here's basically how it works. You take this part out of the bag. If I take this part out of the bag, I can show you the destructions. So that gives you a little bit of an idea of how it works. So, really, you just flip this heater upside down, slide this thing on it, and that prevents the sear from engaging. So now, when I squeeze the trigger, it doesn't do anything. So, No click, there's just nothing. So on the one hand, if you carry a Glock, the, the challenge with dry fire with a Glock is that you draw, you press out, you press the trigger, and then at that point, it breaks. The, the cycle stops because the, the slide hasn't cycled. You, you can't have another regular normal trigger break so what you do you move the slide just enough to catch the sear again you reholster and you you repeat which is fine but it also starts unintentionally training the habit of draw fire and then <laughs> pull on the slide so you to avoid that you have to draw fire and then break out of that training mode stop reset slowly, considerately, considerably, with great thought, <laughs> manipulate the slide, then go back into training mode. And it's awkward and weird. The idea here is that you just draw, fire, 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 reholster, whatever your, the rest of your training. Draw, move, fire, fire, fire. It's not a perfect solution, but they, they were pretty cheap. I don't remember the, the actual cost. I'll, put that in and post but you're also kind of missing the point if you're not getting that trigger break so I don't know there's some some give and take some positives and negatives about it um, as a relatively inexpensive training tool I think it's a good thing to have in the toolbox but that said I've had it in my toolbox for several months and um, never used it after I made the first video on it so it's up to you guys. Um, as I said earlier, this video, and from now on, I think I'm gonna try to do a video like this as often as I'm able where I can give away some of this crap that I've had. Um, I'll cover the postage and everything. You just say you want it. Whoever calls it first gets it, but 
This video is going out to Patreons first, so they'll probably see it before the rest of y'all. If you want a first crack at stuff like this, join my Patreon. I love you.